Now, our second example of an earthquake is going to be the New Zealand earthquake of 2011, which in particular struck the city of Christchurch. I'm going to start off a bit of background information about the Christchurch earthquake. And I guess one of the most important bits of key information about any earthquake is the magnitude, the strength of the earthquake. And this particular one measured 6.3 on the Richter scale, so just a little bit smaller than the Haiti earthquake. And this earthquake struck at 12.51, so about lunchtime, on the 22nd of February 2011. And the actual epicentre of the earthquake was about six miles southeast of Christchurch, of the city that was most impacted by the earthquake. And um, the actual earthquake occurred along a conservative plate boundary where two plates were sliding past each other. And more specifically, it was the Pacific plate and the Australian plate. So that's a bit of background for you effects of the earthquake. Now as you can see here some of the biggest impacts of the New Zealand earthquake were that 181 people were killed and around 2,000 people were also injured. Also hundreds of kilometres of water and sewage pipes were also damaged so that left a lot of people without water. Moving on we also had more than half of the buildings in the city centre were severely damaged, and that included the uh, cathedral, which lost its spire, as you can see in the image here. And all in all, about 80% of the city was left without electricity. We also had lots of businesses that were damaged, and that meant they were out of action and couldn't work, so they couldn't make any money. Obviously, people who worked for these businesses that were damaged also might have lost their jobs or couldn't go to work for a certain period of time, so that impacted them as well. And also, Christchurch couldn't actually host the Rugby World Cup matches that they were supposed to um, because of all this destruction. So obviously that meant that people lost income through tourism. That's the effects done. Now for the responses. So because New Zealand is quite a rich country like the UK, that means that they have quite good emergency services. So as a result of that, lots of people were rescued and treated in the hospitals and saved from the injuries that they received following the earthquake. So also about $7 million was sent in aid from other countries to help people in New Zealand. Moving on, um, over a longer period of time, uh, about $900 million was spent on repairing people's houses and rebuilding people's houses that were destroyed. But as a sort of solution to that problem temporarily, um, houses were actually provided for people whose homes were damaged. So sort of temporary shelters were set up until people's houses were repaired completely. And that's the responses done as well. So now you should have a full case study on the New Zealand earthquake, and you can now even compare it to the Haiti earthquake we've already done.